Hello, this is Chase Bludgey. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Marlin 1894. Now, honestly, I didn't have the highest expectations for this rifle. It's not necessarily that I thought I wouldn't like it. I just didn't expect to be wowed by it. I'm just going to go ahead and be real and say that it, this is truly a remarkable little carbine. Now, I enjoyed every part of shooting and testing this gun, and I'm officially putting it in my Hall of Fame recommendations for overall likable and versatile firearms. Before I state my case as to why I dig this gun so much, let's first explain what it is and talk a little bit about Marlin. The Marlin 1894 is a lever-action carbine. This one happens to be chambered in 44 Magnum, and it also accepts 44 Special Rounds as well. Now you can get this rifle in a variety of calibers, but a couple of the more popular would be like 357 mag and uh, 45 long cold. Now it's loaded through the side here into a tube style magazine that houses 10 rounds. I would think you'd be able to get an extra one in there if you're shooting 44 special, but I didn't have the chance to confirm that. The rounds are chambered manually via lever action, which forces the bolt rearward and the bolt forces the hammer rearward as well. Now incidentally the gun can't be fired unless the hammer is back, much like a single action 1911. The lever obviously ejects the spent casing as well. They're expelled out the side in the same place that they're loaded. Now the stock is what they call American Black Walnut. It looks kinda like uh, laminate to me, but there are a few different finishes that it can be had in. The steel portion of the rifle is blued and comes stock with a 20 inch barrel that has a slow twist rate of 1 in 36. That means that the bullet does one full revolution in 36 inches. Then again, this round is more like a basketball than a football and doesn't really require like a tight spiral to stabilize it, which is why a round like this would, wouldn't be as easily deflected and like the brush or anything else that may interfere with its flight path. Now the rear sight is adjustable for elevation and the front sight is this nice thin blade that is uh, shrouded. Now I was very surprised to find that I actually really like this sight setup, although it might not be ideal for those who don't see real well. The Marlin of old like this one were made in North Haven, Connecticut, but have since been bought up by the Freedom Group. Uh, somewhere in the era of 2007-2008 and are now produced by Remington in their Kentucky and New York facilities. The Freedom Group is basically Remington after they acquired a bunch of companies, most notably Bushmaster, uh, Tapco, and of course Marlin. The rifle had some shaky quality control after the shift. Uh, in fact, the Freedom Group uh, quickly became known for having quality control issues across the board. Now, I believe the worst is behind them now, and they now go by the name of uh, Remington Outdoor Company. With all that said, let's get into what this rifle would be used for. Now, the primary purpose of a rifle like this could be a rather extensive list, honestly, because you can pretty much do it all with it, and therein lies part of the beauty. If used for hunting, it would be a great hog gun. I suppose you could also use it to hunt deer or um, coyotes or antelope, uh, even larger game if need be. I can't say it'd be my first choice for large game, but I think it would be an exceptional backwoods carbine, as it is a lot of gun for the 6.5 pounds that it weighs. Now, it's definitely a recreational gun. Believe it or not, it is really a fun gun to shoot. To be honest, I was expecting the recoil to be a bit more jarring, but it was actually about perfect. You definitely get the feeling that there's some shit behind it, but it's still enjoyable to shoot. In fact, it, it KO'd my dueling tree, but the recoil feels similar to that of an AK. 44 Magnum in a revolver is not a lot of fun for me to be shooting all day. Uh, I mean, not that I could really afford it to do it too often anyway, as it costs about a dollar per round, but my point is, is that the platform cleans, cleans up the recoil rather nicely. As a matter of fact, uh, this was one of those guns that feels so smooth and natural in hand and shoots so well that it honestly feels like an extension of yourself. Now I found that this translates to great accuracy and consequently a very fun gun to shoot. It is however a shorter range gun as the lower velocity and heavier bullets 
resembled the trajectory of that of a mortar when shot beyond about 100 yards. Now, obviously I'm being hyperbolic here, but the heavier 44 Magnum does drop very quickly. As far as the action goes, I can't say that it is the very smoothest that I've ever felt in the lever gun, but it's pretty damn smooth. There's a lot that goes into the timing and mechanical action on the lever gun, so when you have a nice smooth action that reliably feeds rounds, you can rest assured that you're dealing with a quality product because lever action firearms are just notoriously difficult firearms to make well. The trigger on this thing is like glass. It's very crisp yet relatively light, breaking at just over 3 pounds. Now, I don't know that lever guns are normally known for great triggers, but I'm telling you that this particular one is a very nice, crisp, single-stage trigger with zero take-up. I mean, it's truly a thing of beauty, and moreover, it curtails the major variable of gun movement while pulling the trigger, which results in better accuracy, which, of course, normally equates to having more fun when shooting recreationally. The safety on this one is of the crossbolt variety, which is both loved and hated depending on your position. Now, I don't believe that it is true to the original design, but I will say that it is placed well and it is positive in its feeling, uh, meaning that it's not likely to be manipulated unless you intend to do so. The hammer does have to be back for it to be engaged or disengaged. Now, one thing that I noticed and I didn't really like was the fact that the hammer drops when the safety is engaged. Now, the reason I didn't like this is there's a universal rule when experiencing a malfunction, and that is to pretty much reload the weapon. So, so when I did that, it took a couple rounds being ejected into the snow before I realized I wasn't experiencing malfunctions, but that the safety was on. Just some food for thought, and certainly noteworthy if one was planning to use it in a defensive capacity. This carbine was milled for scope rings from what I understand, although mounting one wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for me as a fair bit of its charm comes from being very light and fast into action. As far as accuracy goes, I mentioned earlier that the rifle feels like an extension of yourself. I think it is an accumulation of it being lightweight, uh, it having a terrific trigger, and perhaps the very thin blade they put for the front sight. Granted, I was only shooting at about 50 yards and inward in the footage shown, but this certainly is not a 1 MOA gun, and it really wasn't designed as such. The idea is to put rounds on any reasonable target with relative ease in a quick hurry. Uh, that being said, I'd say you could get about 2 MOA accuracy out of it, or uh, about 2 inches at 100 yards for those who don't understand the nomenclature. So let's talk some of the benefits of putting a 44 mag into this platform. Now, naturally, it's going to be easier to shoot well. Uh, it, it holds about twice as much ammo as a pistol, and it's just a more pleasant shooting experience all around. But in addition to all of that, you get a substantial gain in velocity and obviously overall energy by virtue. Now, obviously, this depends on many factors, such as the length of the pistol barrels, uh, the type of powder used, even the bullet weight, but from my research, you can expect at least a 30% increase in velocity from an 8-inch pistol barrel, and even more from a 4-inch barrel. As I mentioned before, there were many variants of this rifle made across an array of calibers and throughout many years. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, different barrel shapes, special editions, and so on, but you know, you also have the pre- and post-freedom group issue, however subjective that may be, but a modern rifle such as this one can be had somewhere in the neighborhood of five to $700, and of course upward if you start getting into the higher-end models. But just to kind of summarize what we were talking about, this gun is nothing short of awesome. It's a modern take on old-school Americana, which adds to its cool factor. Especially if, you know, you're drawn to the Western-style firearms anyway. The best part is that it is a tried-and-true design, and it still holds its own and offers versatility in about every application you could designate for it in modern times. It is an excellent and lightweight brush gun, which 
makes it a great option to take in the backwoods, whether it be in defensive, hunting, or recreational capacity. The trigger on this thing is a work of art, breaking clean, crisp, and light, and an action that is not only reliable, but smooth. The only thing that I'm not overly fond of is the safety, and perhaps the cost of ammo, but the former is certainly not a deal breaker and can easily be worked around and the latter has nothing to do with the firearm itself. So all in all, a terrific option for those looking for a smooth and reliable lightweight carbine. I really can't say enough good about it. So I guess I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Anyway, there you go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your mark down below. If you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, favorite, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Chase Balaji, signing off.